Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're gonna to do some MIG welding and I thought it'd be a good idea to just do kind of a run through of each of the four common joints that you might MIG weld and how to approach each one. So the first joint we're gonna attack is the butt joint right here where the edges just butt up against one another. We're gonna do this twice. Once will be partial penetration and once will be full penetration. So this has no gap in it. And when you're running short circuit MIG on a butt joint like this, when you're dealing with one eighth inch material or three millimeters like we are, um, with no gap, you're not gonna penetrate all the way through. So I'm just gonna run this here in the flat position. And uh, for all of this, I'm just using some middle of the road settings, 265 inches a minute, 18 and a half volts for uh, eighth inch steel um, with 035 wire. So I'm gonna make sure that I can travel the full length of this joint right here, maintaining a steady work angle, travel angle, and stick out. And if I'm able to do that, then I'll be in good shape without a lot of motion just to trace along this joint right here. Now, when I'm done with this weld, uh, we'll take a look at it. But uh, what I'm looking for is just an even profile. One of the biggest uh, failure points when you're running like this is you can be off to the side of the joint and you can't really tell. Um, right there, it's, uh, you know, I slowed down a little bit towards the end. You can see that heat tint widen up, but either way, I didn't have full penetration in any case. Now, if you read enough internet comments, you might think that uh, any weld that isn't full penetration is totally useless. That's really just not true. There are a lot of applications where uh, partial joint penetration is completely acceptable or it can even be preferable because it can help keep alignment. Uh, I just want to show you here bending the root open with that face reinforcement on there um, where it is sitting proud of the material. You have quite a bit of strength. You can see it's just barely opening up, if at all, as I'm bending this open. So it's strong enough for a lot of situations. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a place for uh, full joint penetration. We're going to run a full penetration butt joint here in just a minute. But I just want to point out that it's not weaker than water. I mean, it's still pretty strong and a completely useful joint. So uh, that's the value in testing things and just knowing the structural requirements of whatever it is that you're working on because you might not need full penetration and sometimes you're just as well uh, off without it. That being said, let's go ahead and run one with full joint penetration. And the best way to do that here with 1 8th material, in my opinion, is putting in a gap. If you're thinner than this, like 1 16th or 1 half millimeter, then you can penetrate through with no gap. Here, you're good with a gap. If you get much thicker than this 8th inch, then you're probably going to want to put a bevel on to be able to get full penetration but a gap should be just fine. So I'll tack the ends here. Now the size of gap that I'm using is a 3 seconds of an inch or about two and a half millimeter wide gap, just set by eye because I've done this enough. Um, but you could use like a piece of TIG filler rod to be able to do that. Now I'm gonna weld this in the horizontal or 2G position just so you can see the backside and watch it penetrate in. Now I missed it a little bit at the start coming off that tack but you can see it laying in a nice root uh, past there. And all I'm doing is lining up on the leading edge of that puddle and just tracing right in the center of the joint. There's no crazy movement or shenanigans there. I'm just letting it fill in all the way. And it worked out pretty well. Now, one thing that I'll point out here about the bead profile is that it's sitting a little bit more flat because you had a place for your material to go. Now, at the end, I paused a little to fill the crater. There's still a little crater, but it's raised high. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to zap that there at the end uh, when I finished. But either way, um, notice not a bad route most of the way along. Coming off that tack, once again, I missed it a little bit, but uh, you, you get the idea here. Um, with a gap, it's pretty straightforward to get a full penetration uh, butt joint here on 8th inch thick material. Um, similar thing for a first pass if you had a bevel with a little bit of a gap on something thicker. Now let's move on to a lap joint. This is where the material just overlaps. You see these all over the place. Um, but I'm just going to tack them on the edges right here so those tacks don't get in the way. Now with this, it's a fillet weld. So I'm down here into the bottom corner of that joint, but I'm going to angle my gun a little bit more towards the bottom than the back. And that's because I just have a bigger heat sink on the bottom and I want to make sure that it ties in. So once again, I'm trying to maintain the best I can a steady stick out, angle, 
and travel speed. Those three things are the whole game when you're MIG welding. And notice I'm aiming a little bit more towards the bottom plate than the back and just watching that top edge roll over. And I'm using that to pace my progression, just adjusting my speed so slightly as I go along to make sure that I get a nice even edge up there at the top. And you end up with something like this. And even though I'm not 100% steady, it's certainly acceptable, a lot better than a lot of theme park rides that I've ridden on. And I'm pretty happy with that. So that's really all it takes there. Um, once again, the consistent stick out, angle, and movement, and you're good to go. So that is the recipe across the board. Now let's take a look at the next joint here. This is gonna be a T-joint and with a T-joint, um, I'll tack it in and it's a fillet weld once again, like these others. Now you could, if you're just starting, prop this up to weld it in the 1F or flat position right here. And that would be a little bit easier for a beginner, but I'm gonna weld it in the 2F or horizontal position just like this, which is more representative of what you come across in uh, regular fabrication, at least what I've found. So here I'm coming in about 45 degrees, just a slight push angle. You could drag it too with short circuit MIG. It doesn't make that big of a difference, I promise it doesn't. Um, but uh, either way, maintain a steady travel angle. Now in this case, I am using just a slight weave to help uh, pace progression really, kind of some uh, more of a loop, but uh, I'm not leaving the puddle. So there's not a whole lot of movement and you could just move steadily along. Um, but this works well for me just to keep a steady pace and I, I've found that to be helpful. Take a look at the result here and it is, you know, is even uh, just doing the best that I can here and it uh, would be good enough for a lot of things. Let me point out on the bead profile, it is slightly convex. If you wanted to make it flatter, you just turn up the voltage a little bit. That increases the arc length and would flatten that profile out just a little bit. So this is with the slightly higher voltage. I would do that. Um, again, the first result is completely acceptable, but I like this one a little bit better with a more flat bead profile. So uh, increasing voltage a little is going to flatten that out. That's the key there. Now let's go ahead and look at the last joint. This is an outside corner joint. Once again, it is a fillet weld that sits down there in the corner. And the fit up here is really important so that you have both edges exposed to the whole length of the joint so it can fill in just like that. And once again, I'm going to make sure I can go through my range of motion because you got to move pretty quickly on this one. And so I'm maintaining my angle, my stick out, and my travel. Once again, those three things, that's the recipe. And then I'm just using that puddle to pace progression all the way along, watching it eat away those edges and round over and fill in. And so this is the result. In a lot of cases, you wouldn't even need to grind it because you get something that rounds over uh, pretty nice or grinding would be minimal. Now, if you look on the uh, backside here, you can see evidence that we got uh, penetration throughout a little bit more at the end than the start because you're preheating. So that's, uh, that's pretty typical. But uh, either way, certainly an acceptable result. So if you practice and learn these four joints, these are the four joints that we work up to in my online courses. Um, you'll be able to weld just about anything that you want to. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me here for a little while today. If you have some questions, things that you're trying to learn, drop me a comment. I have a ton of videos coming up on the channel and I'd love to roll in some of those things um, that you guys are trying to sort out. And if you are just starting out, be sure to check out my online courses linked in the description. It's 39 bucks and I give you just the information you need when you need it with a ton of practice exercises because that's really where we make our headway. So with that in mind, get out there, give this a try, and we'll see you next time.